Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Joey and this here is Dorian and we just watched the Square Enix press conference for E3 2018. Uh, watched through all of that, got some thoughts on yeah. it for you. One of the first things that they showed for us was more stuff from Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, Dorian, we can yeah. finally talk about this. You've got a chance to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider, haven't you? I did. I, we played it about a month ago. We, uh, we got to t uh, test it out, test some gameplay out. And overall, I was really impressed with the, the stuff we did get to see because the, uh, the footage they showed off today, the levels that they showed off, the tomb, uh, the tombs and the caves that we, they explored, that's kind of what we got to play and demonstrate. And it was cool because they said in the demonstration that this is like Laura's defining moment. This is her finally becoming the Tomb Raider who, that who she was supposed to be. So they definitely gave us a lot of good footage. And when I got to play it, it felt like, kind of like, I don't want to say the Dark Knight, Arkham Knight trilogy with Batman, like him exploring and jumping around and, and viewing the city and stuff. That's kind of how it felt, but in a jungle-esque type of environment. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about the, the stealth mode, yeah, honestly. Exactly. That's what I'm the, uh, it doesn't look like it brings too much that's new, mm -hmm. like stuff that we haven't seen from Rocksteady stuff that we haven't seen from the Splinter Cell franchise. So I'm, that that's a little lackluster to me, but as far as Lara's journey, I'm definitely excited about it. Um, the uh, cinematic stuff was stuff that had been shown at mm -hmm. Xbox, but the actual gameplay stuff uh, was stuff that was new to look at, um, though we had seen it. It's getting hard to yeah. <laughs> remember what has been released and what we've seen uh, on our own. Um, it, th they talked a little bit about the hub world, which to me, I'm not a big fan of the hub world. It starts to make Lara feel too RPG, uh, Tomb Raider feel too RPG and not enough mm. of uh, an action adventure game. Yeah. But we'll see how it works uh, in practice. The next thing they talked about was uh, new stuff for Final Fantasy mm -hmm. 14 online, uh, including a crossover with uh, Monster Hunter World, and that is coming in summer of 2018. Um, also, they uh, partnered up with Don't Nod, uh, the guys who did Life is Strange. Oh, uh, for the Captain. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that looked kind of interesting. I'm not going to lie. I, didn't, I haven't played the first one, so this definitely made me want to go see what that's about. And this. And yeah, no, this Life one. is Strange is a very, like, it's, it's a very different kind of game, and this definitely looks like the same kind of thing. This is the kind of game that I would refer people, when, when they say that they don't play video games or mm -hmm. something like that, uh, this right away, uh, you know, uh, Captain Spirit looks like something that I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah just give it a try. Yeah. hang on and play this. And the best part about it is it comes out this month and it comes out for free. So if you've ever tried to convince your mom to play games, you have them play Captain Spirit. This is probably like, like we haven't even played it, I yet, played it yet. And I know that it's going to be a good uh, opportunity for that. We do get to play it on the E3 floor. So <sighs> listen, uh, listen to... Uh, our takes later on Collider Games to see exactly what that was like. Um, so the next thing that they did uh, was uh, Dragon Quest XI, and we've gotten a chance to see a little bit from Dragon yeah, Quest we XI. Tested, I, I tested that out for about two or three minutes. It was okay. I didn't. I don't really have any solid opinions on that, but it looked interesting, and I'm definitely mm -hmm. considering like playing it even more, and we'll probably test it out at E3, but overall, the stuff that they did show looked pretty cool. For yeah, so. honestly, this is the first time they've done a console game in a very mm -hmm. long time. They've skipped a console generation. Um, and that's, you know, one of the things that Square Enix has been doing. They've been bringing things back for this console generation like they're doing with Kingdom Hearts. Before we get to Kingdom Hearts, however, um, Babylon's Fall is a new thing that they announced that's coming in 2019. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, next on the line, next on the list uh, was uh, Nier Automata uh, moving to Xbox. We already saw that at the Xbox press conference. Um, and this is a, a running theme, I think. There were a lot of things that Square Enix... Uh, already revealed, that already showed off their... They kind of already blew their load yeah. at the Xbox press conference. I saw um, that on social media, too. You saw a lot of um, just, like people were like, why is Square Enix even... What are they even Yeah, what, are, what are they like, going like, to do? All their stuff has already been like shown ahead of time. But there, I mean, there's some confidence. stuff that they yeah. really did not show at the Xbox conference. We'll get to that. Uh, Octopath Traveler, uh, 2.5D... Uh, JRPG. This, like, honestly, this pixel sprite style in, like, uh, 2.5D uh, on the Nintendo Switch, something I could be totally interested in. Uh, again, JRPGs are mm -hmm. kind of hard for me only because westernization doesn't always work out that well, but we'll see how this works. I'm excited to check it out. Um, next on that list, though, was Just Cause 4, Enrico being back Ooh. 
And that looked amazing. Like as soon as I saw that one, I'm like, all right, I yeah. gotta get this game, especially because of the new elements they're introducing, like the weather and all that stuff. That's nothing. The jets and all all of that that excited me so much. I'm ready for this game. When is it supposed to come out again? Uh, that one is coming out December fourth. Okay, um, okay. So they showed the uh, cinematic stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they they showed the footage at Xbox. Uh, again. again, but they didn't show the interview, uh, the developer interview, uh, which was describing the new, uh, the grapple, the new yeah. world, the new grapple, the uh, the extreme weather, all that kind of stuff. So we did get some more information on it, but again, a lot Hard of it was shown at yeah. Xbox. Square Enix, why why are you having a press conference? Um, <laughs> One thing that was completely new, they started this game with a live action trailer and then it uh, became this game called The Quiet Man, which honestly, like, the little bit of gameplay that we did see, or a little bit of cinematic that we did see, um, kind of reminded cool. me of like Jet Li Rise to Honor off the PS2, mm. which, I mean, if that's the case, then yeah, let's do it. But uh, yeah, no, it was a... Uh, that, that one, that... Caught me by surprise. I, honestly, I'm excited for that. It's a game. good tease. Yeah, it's a good was... tease. Um, no, no information about it, but you know, we'll we'll see what happens. Maybe there's a little more or information on the floor that we can get to you. Um, they finished the conference with Kingdom Hearts three, which is something that we've been waiting for for such Ever. a long time. Like I said, this skipped an entire console generation. Kingdom Hearts, the last console Kingdom Hearts was on the PlayStation mm -hmm. two. And it was always a PlayStation exclusive. Now with Kingdom Hearts 3, again, this is something we got at the Xbox reveal at Microsoft. And they showed everything, every, all the same footage at Xbox or at Square Enix that they did at Xbox. So there, there wasn't anything new. There was some cool stuff, cool. like seeing, seeing uh, Aqua you know, go in full dark side um, and uh, you know, really hearing the conversation about... Stuff. Yeah, yeah, hearing the conversation about kind of trying to get Roxas mm -hmm. back. What were your thoughts on, just in general, like Square Enix, this is not the first time they're showing Kingdom Hearts 3. This is not the first time they're showing this footage, but what are your thoughts on this footage? So, actually, this was so, I tried to stay away from some of the Xbox 3 footage cause I, just because I knew Square Enix was going to have some of the same stuff. So this was my first time seeing the Kingdom Hearts trailer, and overall, I really did enjoy it. I'm liking how they're incorporating the new Disney Disney stuff, like Incredible, mm -hmm. I mean, not Incredible Zone, Wreck-It Ralph, Elsa, and all of them, throwing them to the storyline. So overall, I'm excited to see what they're going to bring to this new Kingdom Hearts and give us more, give us a whole new thing we haven't seen because people have been waiting for a long time. Like, people have been people waiting been, for a long time. You go on Twitter, you go time. to social media, anything. People have just been like, where's Kingdom Hearts? Where's the release date? Give us some stuff. Now we finally got a release date and we can expect them, we know when to expect it. So yeah. the hype is going to just keep building and building. So early 2019 is when we're expecting to get Kingdom mm -hmm. Hearts 3. Expect that date to get pushed back because it's Kingdom Hearts 3. That's what happens. One, no. Honestly, the, the thing that like, was kind of lackluster about this footage um, and it bugged me in early Kingdom Hearts games and I was like, you know what? It's because it's a PS2 game. This is gonna be, uh, you know, current gen. Mm -hmm. This is gonna fix those issues. And it feels like it's not there. And maybe it was just the trailer and the way they did it, but they had the music playing and they had like some lines and things like that as, as certain parts of the story right. were happening. But within that, they had no sound effects. It just felt a little they had, they, they, yeah. there It felt empty. And there, there wasn't anything there. Like, like Hulk, uh, Hercules, Hulk, Hercules is there, like holding rocks and and straining and struggling. But you don't hear any of the rocks. You don't hear any of the environment, anything like that. And that always kind of throws me off because that's been a staple of Kingdom Hearts mm -hmm. for a while, and it's always kind of bugged me. And I was hoping they'd fix that. Doesn't seem like they did. But like you said, people were waiting for this. Forever. This is a thing yeah. that Square Enix said they were going to do, and people have been waiting for it for a long time. On that note, things that Square Enix has said they were going to do and people have been waiting for that we didn't get here was anything about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Nothing. Not a mention, not a logo or anything like that, not a release date or you know things like that. We've, we've gotten information in mm -hmm. the past, sure, but I was just expecting to get it a little extra. And there was one thing uh, also, that you yeah, mentioned. They didn't even bring anything or tease anything about the Avengers because I know they announced last year that they're they're going to work on an Avengers game. We didn't have one tease or anything about that. I, a lot of people on social media were also saying, asking about that ahead of time. 
hyping mm-hmm. it up and like, okay, we're finally going to get something teased, but nope, they didn't like it. Yeah. You, and you would think, especially since they already showed a lot of their stuff at the Xbox thing, this is something that they could bring in and like try to bl- th- blow the floor with people, but no mention, <laughs> no tease or anything. Like yeah. That. So it kind of bummed me out. And it's a, it's going to be a Crystal Dynamics project mm-hmm. that's uh, worked on with, uh, with um, Idios Montreal as well. Um, and both of those studios are kind of busy at the moment, so maybe that's uh, one of the reasons it just like wasn't ready for E3, and they'd rather just not show anything. But still, yeah. like overall, I think this was kind of a lackluster uh, press conference. Hopefully, Square Enix has some cool, interesting stuff to show us on the floor to elaborate on these games that they showed. But what do you think, guys? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe and subscribe specifically to both Collider Video and Collider Games. That's youtube.com slash Collider Games. I'm Joey. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Joey Rasool, R-A-S-S-O-O-L. Dorian, where can they find you? You can find me at Twitter, Instagram, Dorian, Parks and Rec. Dorian in Parks and Rec. Let's talk about Twitter, talk about social media. We got talk about Marvel, talk about Avengers. We do all that here. So make sure to follow, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you later for a new video.